my Detroit players. What's that word, Piston fans? We back with another video. Tonight was game night. Yes, sir. Game night. Pistons versus Bucks up in Milwaukee. Uh, Pistons lose a close game down the stretch. Um, it was a pretty good game. Competitive. Uh, we're going to get into the game. We're going to get into the last six minutes of the game, too. Because if what I told y'all in my last video, it showed, it reared his ugly head again. And we saw more of the same. All right. So if you didn't watch my last video, watch my last video after you watch this one. But in the meantime, we're going to tote this up and we're going to get into this game recap. All right. Let's get it. Yeah, Sersky. All right, let's get into this game. Tough game. Um, we was down a lot of players, man. Bench was super thin, similar to last game. Uh, shout out Troy Reaver. Just, uh, we just signed Kevin Knox that was on the roster last season. We brought him in for some depth. We know we just lost Joe Harris for the next two weeks, I believe. And then you still got Ivy that's that's sick, that's been dealing with some. Uh, I hope he actually sick. We're going to talk about that a little bit, too. If I talked about that in the last video, too. So check that out. Uh, of course, Mate still out. Of course, uh, Bogey still out. And, um, and then during in and out the lineup, but he played tonight. And he played well tonight. He started off very, 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 very strong uh, first half, attacking the rack, uh, rolling to the rim. Uh, he was physical down there. Still a little stiff. Like, sometimes I think JD be a little stiff out there. And then sometimes I don't think he, he hustle as much as, as we need our players to hustle at this stage in our, our rebuild. You know, we need people, you know, giving us everything. And I'm not saying that he's not giving us everything. I just think it's some plays where he could give a little more effort on some of those closeouts on Brook. He kind of, like, jog, jog to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, but we're not going to get on JD. Because um, he played very well. Um, big game from K. Um, K got off tonight. I think he dropped 33. Um, most of it came, almost all of it came in the second half. He, along with Sasser, they both got busy in the second half. Right after Giannis got ejected. It was a ticky-tack call, man. He he flexed on Stu for like a millisecond and got teed up. I don't think he deserved to be teed up for that. I think that was light. I've seen a hell of a lot worse on an NBA basketball court than what we than what Giannis got tossed for. So, you know, we almost caught a break on that. Um, and that third quarter, we started to heat up. It, it started with Kate a little bit. K got going in the third. He was on the heater. Then uh, my boy Saucy Sasser got going in the third. And I love me some Marcus Sasser, man. I loved Houston. Mark. I love sophomore year Houston Marcus Sasser. I've been following Dog for a nice little minute. And um, I remember before the draft, I was, you know, everybody do player comps. I was comparing them a lot to, I, I said, below the three-point line, like his mid-range and his float game, it, it reminds me a lot like... Um, Tyrese Maxey, who we got coming up on Friday for the end season tournament game. I will be there. So if y'all see us, come holla at us. Uh, we probably do like a little a little halftime hangout where anybody who wanna come holla at us and you know talk sports, kick it, whatever, network, you know, pull up on us. We're gonna do that. We gotta find an official location for that. Um shout out my family over at Dynasty Sports Network. Um, shout out my boy Everything King. Um, and all the other dope, you know, content creators out there, pissing content creators, you know, I rock with everybody. I'm pretty much a fan of everybody. Um, some more than others, but, um, anyway, you know what I'm saying? I was, I, I, I like to compare Sasser to a Tyrese Maxey, like in a mid range float game. Like I feel like his mid range and his flow game and his ability to, to go off the dribble when teams are kind of running you off the line he's able to go off the dribble and pull up in his sweet spots and knock down shots whether that's a floater or a mid-range jumper like he's able to do that so i i compare him a lot to um to tyrese maxi in that way 
And then on the perimeter, he reminds me a lot like Dame, who we got to see tonight. Like, uh, when I say that to people, it sounds kind of far-fetched, but if you watch kind of the player movements and the spots on the floor that they like to get to, um, the similar moves that they use, the escape dribble, you know what I'm saying, the, the pullback joint, like, they both got a lot. It's similar. It's real similar, their games. I feel like he's a mix between Sasser and um, and Dame. Now, let's get into Dame. Now, before we get into Dame, no, we don't get into Dame. Dame did what Dame did. Once what Dame does, once um, Giannis filed out, or not filed out, once he got ejected, um, Dame, you know, he checked it. He talked, he checked his watch. It was about that time. It was Dame time. He had it set, and he was ready to go. He really went off in the second half, uh, more so the fourth quarter. When, once he realized, you know, it is Dame time. I'm about to take this thing over. He did what Dame do, man. So shout out to Dame. That's my guy, man. I love me some Dame. You can never get enough for watching Dame. But um, back to the Pistons, man. Uh, I feel like we shared the ball once Giannis went out. K went on the heater, then Sasha went on the heater. But I kind of felt like, you know, that time was coming. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, okay, here we go. We're getting down to the last, you know, six, eight minutes of the game. Um, the opportunity is there. I think we was up like 10 points. We was floating around that, you know, 7 to 10 range for, the, you know, the beginning parts of the fourth quarter, maybe the first six minutes, but the last six minutes. You know, it was kind of a back and forth game, but we still maintained like a five to seven point lead. But you, we just watched it slowly dwindle down. Now, my issue with this, and I understand that we don't got our vets in. We understand that we don't have, you know, the veteran presence that's able to calm your, your teammates down. You know, players who've been there, players who know what to look for, players who are able to make adjustments on the fly, um, players who 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 know when it's time when it's winning time because a lot of our guys haven't been in those predicaments like we're a young team so just court time period is already limited for these guys or minimal for these guys compared to the competition when you're talking to Giannis you know 10-year vets like Brooke Lopez and Crowder and Dame and you know you feel me like so compared to these teams you know our guys experience is, is minimal so we needed a lot of those vets to kind of be there in common. And you kind of always got that feeling in these Pistons games when it get down to like those last six minutes. But my biggest fear is, is my biggest issue with the last six minutes, and I spoke about this in the last video, is like we don't really have no true direction. And I feel like K takes it upon himself to be that guy. But I feel like, his definition of that guy is kind of narrow-minded in the sense that he kind of, he, I call it, you know, K hero ball. And I can feel it. I can see it. And like I said in the last video, it's one thing to play hero ball and you're missing some of those shots. But it's another thing when you're playing hero ball, you're missing shots and turning the ball over. Like, I'm not, I can't cope with these turnovers, family. I really cannot cope. They not like, it ain't, it don't be like Pat Beverly and, 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 and Laurie is like all up in your paws, all up in you, you know, getting you all frizzled and rattled and, you know, you're sweating and you're beating and your heart beating fast and you're making quick decisions and you, your palms are steady these week, um, spaghetti, you know what I'm saying? He just vomit on his shirt off. You, every time. Like, every time, my boy. Like, why is it that you always turning the ball over? Like, these not even, like, real forced turnovers. These is, like, minimal pressure. And, and that's not to take nothing from Milwaukee. Like, they're, a, a, I'm not going to say a great defensive team, but they're a good defensive team. They're a good defensive team, but they ain't locking, they ain't locking, they ain't locking up now. Milwaukee ain't just out here locking up. They not. They simply not just out here locking up. And the same thing with Golden State. Like, Golden State is a decent offensive team. They ain't locking up. New Orleans, okay defensive team. They not locking up. Portland, 
trash defensively. They definitely not locking up. But we keep seeing this pattern of these turnovers when Kane get this rock in the last six minutes. Like we we need we need coach. This is what you need to do, Coach Money. This is what we need to do. You know how in the NFL. NFL offense has got a two-minute offense installed into the playbook, installed to where y'all know whatever go on in this game, when we say two minutes, when them deuces go up, y'all know what time it is. Like, we got certain go-tos. We got certain, you know, pressure leaks. We got certain, certain different things that we can do where we can give a defense option, but we going to get something because they plan, we plan against the clock, and we behind – so they're going to give us certain things. Like, they're going to give you the underneath stuff. They're just not going to let you get out of bounds. But Because they're, they're playing against the clock. They want the clock. Is but my point is, is that when we get in these scenarios, we need to figure out what's the move. What's the move, fam? What's the move, coach? Because this K-Hero ball ain't it. And then I hate, oh, my goodness, I hate it. I think I was watching the New Orleans game. It was one of them games. Word. Down, it was fourth quarter. Sasser and Cade in the backcourt together. And Cade done took a hundred shots and is getting down to the nitty gritty. And Sasser got the rock and he just looking for Cade. Looking for Cade. I can't remember what game. I want to say this was a Norris game, but I don't think so because they had a nice little cushion on us. But it was like the last couple minutes of the game. And, and Cade just turning the rock over and jacking and turning the rock over and jacking. And. Sasser come down with the rock, and they like denying K the ball, and Sasser is like determined to get K the rock. And I'm in my office watching the game because I got the um the monitor over here that I usually use for you know my YouTubes and my ESPNs, my games, but mostly when I'm editing, you know I use it to give myself a big monitor up top. But I'm watching the game and I'm like Sasser, what is? I'm looking at the phone. What is you looking for K for? Shoot the rock, Sass! Shoot the rock! What are you looking for K for? Screaming. It was funny, too, because my old lady was was laughing at me like, who was you yelling at? It sounded like you was yelling at Cade. I'm, I'm not yelling at Cade. I'm yelling at Sasser to stop trying to force feed the rock 2K. Like, I almost feel like that is the little last... That's our two-minute drill is just get it to Cade and let him figure it out. Everybody get the fuck out the way and... You feel me? That ain't it, though, fam. I'm going to tell you why it ain't it. First of all, they know our best offense is K one-on-one -on -one or K in the pick and roll to get to his mid-range, to get to his box. So one thing they're doing is they crowd, they're sagging in and they're crowding the paint. You feel me? Now one can make an argument. We don't got enough shooters. And that's a fair argument. That's fair. That's fair. But you still got to be true. You still got to be true in order to keep the defense honest. So make or miss, that that, that ball got to be kicked out, fam. You feel me? That ball got to be kicked out. We got to find alternative ways to get the rock to the right people, whether that's kicking the rock out and hitting, you know, a, a, a DHO or, you know, a stagger or, or something, family. Like set... Set screens for each other on the perimeter to get each other open. Let's steal some. Let's steal some shit from Golden State playbook. You feel me? Let's steal some of this stuff because this whole like force feed K K hero ball at the end of the game. I'm not going for it. I can't. It don't work. At least not yet. And some would argue, well, you gotta let K get them reps, and that's fair. But to what extent, fam? To what extent, fam? You feel me? Sasser got the going. Now, they did start, you know, playing Sasser tighter down, down the stretch. But come on now. It's still Kay Cunningham. At the end of the day, he still don't get most of the attention. Still. And you still got Sass out there. Let Sass was cooking. And this, listen, and this is another thing, too, Coach Money. I don't want to go on a on a on a on a rant because I love my pistons. I'm just critical. You know what I'm saying? I want to see what's best for us. I want to see us flourish. And I get we still growing. It's still growing pains. We got to get there. I get that 1,000%. But that don't mean every move we're making is right. And I know we tinkering and see what work and what don't work. But come on, fam. 
Like, we got to come up with something else down the stretch. Like, am I the only one that noticed that whenever Sasser got the switch he wanted, which he was either going after Bobby Portis, who, who P Portis is a decent defender. And he's a decent player for sure. He's a good player. I don't even want to call him a decent player. He's a, he's a good player. And when they switched him on weak ass, uh, 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 lefty from Phoenix, uh, the, the, the little munchkin man that's always messing up. I felt like it, man. And I was a Phoenix. I was a fan of that Phoenix roster. But I felt like campaign, like, I feel like if I was on that roster, I would just hate him. Because, like, when he going, he good. But that only that shit only happened, like, 15% of the time. The other 85% of the time, he taking bad shots, he turning the rock over, or he or he pounding the rock and, and keeping the ball away from Book or CP or KD. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he overdo it. But my thing about campaign is he can't guard nobody. And whenever Sasser got the switch, got the, was able to get pick set to get switched, for him to be switched on him, he cooked him every time. Excuse me. He cooked him, and he kept cook, cooking Portis. Why we didn't go back to that? Even if we had to, even if we had to clock out my boy Sass for like a couple minutes when when K got to doing what he doing, because I mean. Once K get to going, ain't no point of nobody else being on the floor anyway. So you might as well have, have let Sasser take him a little Gatorade break. You know, he's probably parched. The, the, the boy was cutting up. Let him get a sip of Gatorade for a second instead of playing him the whole fourth quarter and knowing he paid half the, the, the half the third quarter. Like, clock him out. Let him get him some Gatorade for a couple minutes. Punch him back in. And let him go one on one against Bobby Portis and 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 and, and campaign. That was the matchup. That was the one matchup that we had. If we want to do another football analogy, you know what I'm saying? If we want to do another football analogy, they playing campaign and they playing Dame on the floor together. You t that's not a defensive lineup on a perimeter. Then you put him out there with Bochamp, which is a rookie or a second year player. Like, come on now, like. What are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Clocking, punching back in, and letting go one on one because it was working. Nothing else was working. We not we can't just revert back to the K ball like it don't work. Not check anyway, and we can still sprinkle in a little bit. Use the attention that he getting to let the other guys play off of that. But I will say this too though: when K it get in the hero ball, like everybody else got to do a better job too of getting open and you know setting screens for each other. You know, cutting back door. You know. They got to do more for sure. Because I feel like when K on that, I feel like the other eight players on the floor is just like standing there and watching. And K going one-on-one -on -one with a defender. Like, it's too much of that. I don't want to see no more of that. I'll be happy when Ivy is back. Um, I pray to God. And this might sound crazy, but I pray to God that Ivy is actually sick and not sick. You know what I'm saying? Or sick as hell. And it's a minor and he comes back and it's not one of those things where it's like he voiced his opinion to coach and it got heated or some and coach bench team didn't don't let him travel type of thing. But in the press, we gonna play it like he's sick. So I'd be interested to find out more about that. Um I just got word that Javen Ivy, which is Jaden Ivy's father, um, he's going to be on my guys' podcast, uh, King, as well as Downtown Deuce. They're going to have Javen Ivy on there, so I can't wait to tune in and watch that. And if y'all don't already follow those boys, Downtown Deuce, uh, Everything King, uh, Dynasty Sports Network, um, a lot of, a lot of, it's a lot of stuff going on with Dynasty Network that I don't want to talk about yet, but. It's about to be up, 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 up with Dynasty Network. I ain't, ain't no cap. But I'll be tuned in for that interview because I want to see what Pops got to say about um, where we are currently in the season, where his son is mentally. Um, I would like to hear his, his opinion too. I hope it don't get messy in the sense where when I say messy, I don't mean him per se or definitely not the guys per se. I mean more so, 
you know, some of the things that he say possibly be taken out of context or, you know, the content creators run with it. And y'all know how YouTube do. Y'all know how the internet do. Um, so I hope we keep it PG, but still get some insightful information. And I just pray to God that my boy is just <coughs> sick and not <sighs> sick as hell about what's going on. I pray to God my boy is fine. We going we gonna to shoot those prayers up because we need Ivy. We love Ivy. We believe in Ivy. Um, whether Ivy come off the bench or he start, whatever coach is concocting over there, we just going to rock with it for now. But either way, whether he start or come off the bench, the minutes is not going to work for us, fam. The minutes is not going to work. Brody got to be... If he not starting, he still need to be playing starter minutes. Okay? If he not starting, he still need to be playing starter minutes. And I ain't budging off that because he's a talent. He's a top three talent on this team, in my opinion. Maybe top two. Maybe number one. And I love the guys. I'm not pitting nobody against each other. We're not doing that. I love the guys. I'm saying that what we not about to do is pigeonhole Ivy or put him in this box or make him pick, take a back seat. That whole back seat stuff is crazy to me. Like, it's basketball. It's five players on the floor. You know what I'm saying? It's 48 minutes. Like... I'm not taking no backseat to nobody if I'm on the court. And that don't mean like I won't play my role because I'm going to start in my role. My point is more so take a backseat to somebody. Like I'm not just about to accept that he's the best player. I'm not. I, I don't rock like that. I wasn't raised like that. I don't move like that. I'm not about to accept that nobody on the planet is better than me, not even my teammate. You feel me? We not doing that. You, you you feel me? Start the clock, inbound the ball. Yeah. And we're going to go from there. But what I'm not about to do is go into every game, go into every game, go into every practice, go into every interview. You know what I'm saying? Go into every training session as a second or third or fourth, fifth bench. I'm not rocking like that. And even if you're at the end of the bench, you should feel the same way. It should be more so about opportunity than somebody better than me. You know what I'm saying? He might have more opportunity than me. But I don't want this video to get too long, man. This is my second video. Shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate y'all rocking with me this far. Um, next game is Friday, which is actually the end season, uh, our first end season game. I'm interested to see what this court look like. I will be in attendance with the guys. Um, come holler at us at halftime if you want to kick it with his network. Just talk, talk your talk, whatever you want to do, man. Tell me what I'm doing wrong because I'm new to this thing. You feel me? So I'm the type of, I, I'm, I'm the gang member that, you feel me? I'm going to bring the sauce. I'm going to bring the energy. I'm going to bring the personality, but I'm never um, one to not seek knowledge like i'm always want to seek knowledge i always want to talk to people who doing what i'm doing and doing it at a high level or you know whatever level you're doing like let's just talk about it like i rock with the gang and i rock with the gang detroit player for real you know what i'm saying so come holla at us i want to see what them well we know what the jersey is gonna look like i want to see what that floor looking like because a lot of them other floors was terrible i'm talking about terrible like like the, the the throw up emoji with the green like terrible i ain't with that but uh i want to see what ours look like i want to see the energy in the arena i want to um i want to see how we play i want to see if this game means something to us since you know we on like a five six game skid at this point like it should mean something for us whether it was an in-season tournament game or not but i want to see what people i hope we get ivy back that'd be lovely um, I hope Duran gets a chance to heal because I know he's been in and out. You know, get him healed, get him nice and healthy. Cause we gonna need you, big fella. I ain't gonna lie. We got Joel coming in. We gonna need you, big fella, for sure. So um hopefully all the guys is healthy and everybody come back. Um if you made it this far, make sure you like, subscribe, share this video, 
Look out for me on the Dynasty Sports Network every Sunday, 8 o'clock with the guys. Shout out Dynasty Sports Network. Shout out my guy King. Shout out my guy Downtown Deuce. Shout out all the content creators out there. Um, this video was sponsored by the beautiful people at Culture Detroit, 19327 Livernois on the Avenue of Fashion, all the drip. Anything you need, they got it. Who you think bless me with all this? Ain't it a blessing? Keep me laced. So shout out Coach Detroit. I appreciate y'all for watching, man. Shout out my Detroit players. And um, I see y'all Friday against Philly. Real Mill, I love you. I'm going to always do it for the culture. Remember, everybody ain't loyal. I'm out. Culture. I wonder, is it my culture? What's up, little dog? You good? Y'all got something here, folks? I'm talking about exclusive. They got all the dunks? How many dunks they got? I always love these. They buying shoes, selling shoes. Oh, we got dunk dunk, but it's cool. Oh, they doing TikTok, kid shoes. Y'all got a little vibe in here. Looking for a black owned shoe store to get some real drip at? Come up here and call Detroit, man.